today I have a very fascinating story, but we're not here to just tell fascinating stories. It also has uh, several deep meanings from which we can learn a lot. And it pertains to uh, Moses, one of the most well-known figures, in, uh, certainly in the Old Testament Bible. And we've, uh, of course, uh, spoken about Moses uh, many times. And uh, I want to start, however, from the New Testament, Hebrews 11, verses 24 through 26, where he is mentioned and where his faith is mentioned as Hebrews 11 is all about faith. It says there, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Henry Ward Beecher said, it's not what we take up, but what we give up that makes us rich. And uh, that certainly applies here. When we read these verses, we understand that Moses gave up the riches and treasures of Egypt and the pleasures of sin. But something else is added. It says, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It's a peculiar expression. What does it mean, the son of Pharaoh's daughter? And what is the importance of Pharaoh's daughter? Well, we have to know that the Egyptian royal succession went through the female line, not the male. And this actually originates from Egyptian mythology, in which Isis, who was the sister of Osiris, marries her brother. And the pharaohs continued this uh, incestuous practice. So the crown prince always married the pharaoh's firstborn daughter. He could actually not become pharaoh without this marriage. And their son would then in turn become the crown prince, also known as the son of pharaoh's daughter. So that's, that's um, the importance of this expression, the son of pharaoh's daughter was to be the next pharaoh. So now we begin to understand God's providence in the situation even better. When Pharaoh's daughter found Moses in the Nile, God had directed Moses' little ark directly into the hands of the kingmaker. She was Pharaoh's daughter. She had power to name Moses the next pharaoh because he was her son, by adoption, but still, he was born of the Nile, he was a gift from the gods. And therefore, Moses was in the position of ruling all of Egypt, the most powerful nation uh, on earth in that time. And this makes his sacrifice, as we just read from Hebrews 11 verse 24, all the more remarkable. But instead, he was to lead a few million slaves, which were God's people, through the wilderness to the promised land. The exalted king became the serving or the suffering servant. Where have you heard this before? Now let's look a bit more into Moses' adoptive mother, Pharaoh's daughter. Who was he? She must have had quite a character because she was defying her father's order to, um, to kill all the Hebrew male babies. Um, when we read this, we could wonder, is there any uh, record of her in, um, in secular history? Uh, the Bible doesn't tell too much about her, uh, other than that she was Pharaoh's daughter, but we have no name uh, of her nor of her father. Um, so does history reveal who she was? And in fact, Egyptian history tells of a crown princess with the uh, initiative, the cunningness and, and intelligence that, um, that she had. And this, um, this princess was known 
later as Egypt's greatest queen or pharaoh. Her name was Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut means the greatest of all women. And she lived from 1507 to 1458 before Christ. And that corroborates with the biblical account of, um, of Moses and the days that Moses lived. This uh, Hatshepsut was uh, the firstborn daughter of uh, Tutmose the first, and Tutmose means Toth is born. And the mother of uh, Hatshepsut was uh, As, uh, sorry, Ahmose, born of the moon. And Hatshepsut married her brother, Tutmose the second, and this happened at when she was only fourteen or fifteen years old. And they in turn had a child, which was Tutmose the third. Tutmose the second, uh, Hatshepsut's brother and husband died when uh, their child was only two years old. So he was obviously too young to rule. And thus Hatshepsut became the regent. However, she did not want her son Tutmose the third to become a pharaoh, but rather Moses. And so she would stay in power until uh, Moses would be old enough. Which obviously would be many years since she found Moses as a baby. And um, therefore at some point she declared herself pharaoh. Despite the fact that this role was typically um, uh, attributed to a man. And um, there were, there are other accounts of female rulers of Egypt. Um, prior to Hatshepsut, there was uh, Sobek Neferu and also uh, Nitokris. And they had also assumed the role of Pharaoh, but technically they were queens, not Pharaoh. Um, Hatshepsut was also the only female ruler during a time of prosperity. And uh, she had um, much more power than her female predecessors. All in all, she ruled 21 years, three times seven, before her son Tutmose III took over and Hatshepsut died at the age of 50 years old. Notice, uh, by the way, uh, these, not these names, so the parents of Hatshepsut were Tutmose I and Asmose. And then you have uh, Tutmose the second and Tutmose the third, and then you have of course Moses. In you see in all these names is the word Mose, which is born. So Tot is born or born of the moon, uh, Ach Mose, and then you have Moses who is born of the water or drawn from the water, as he was found in the Nile. <coughs> so this was absolutely an Egyptian name. Um, during Hatshepsut's reign, there was peace, uh, there was great advancement, uh, therefore there was time to develop um, art, architecture, medical uh, or natural sciences, uh, trade and, and all of these things. And um, there were no internal conflicts, no invasions or things like that. Uh, but uh, um, as we see, by the way, uh, even today with nations that are prospering, um, they fight wars in foreign countries. And this was also for Egypt. So there were wars in Nubia and Syria. And um, Hatshepsut was uh, even leading troops by herself. And now it becomes uh, more clear what is written in Acts 7 verse 22. There it says, and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. Moses was the son of the greatest queen of Egypt ever. And he had all the wisdom of Egypt at his disposal. In this time of prosperity, when all these sciences and knowledge were increasing there, he, he was uh, there to learn all these things and he was right at the top, at the source of everything. 
And uh, actually the wisdom uh, of Egypt was known and it would not be um, be rivaled until um, until Solomon. Uh, as it says in 1 Kings 4, verse 30, And Solomon's wisdom excels the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. So until that time, the wisdom of Egypt was uh, was the top. Um, but we see that God ha- had moved all the chess pieces um, of history in the right place and at the right time. Uh, Moses could not have, uh, have been uh, placed in a better circumstances than this. And uh, Moses' mother could not have imagined all this when she put her child in the little ark and put it in the Nile. Um, so, as a prince, Moses received the best education in all fields, governmental, administration, arms, trade, religion, science, music, art, literature, architecture, etc. And like his adoptive mother, Moses too led the Egyptians, you know, the Egyptian troops into battle. And there is uh, extra biblical uh, records of this. Josephus records that uh, as um, a general of Egypt, Moses was sent with an army to turn back an Ethiopian invasion into Egypt. And he did so successfully, but after that he went on the offensive and he went into into, um, Ethiopia having many victories until he reached the royal uh, city, which was called Saba. And this city is situated situated on an island and, and therefore it's very hard to conquer. It greatly worried Moses. He had to lay siege and wait until they had ran out of their resources. And this was not um, uh, a pleasant thing. In the city there was Tharbis, the daughter of the king of Ethiopia. Ethiopia, by the way, also called in the Old Testament uh, Cush. So this um, Tharbis was Cushite. She uh, she saw Moses... uh, leading the army near the city walls, and she saw how he did so with great courage. And uh, she fell in love with him. And she sent her servant servant to him to offer him her hand. Moses accepted on the condition that they would deliver up the city. And so it happened. Moses cut off the Ethiopians, he got married with Tharbis, and they returned to Egypt. Now we know from the biblical uh, record how Moses, a few years later, killed an Egyptian and had to flee to Midian. And therefore had also to leave his um, his Ethiopian uh, wife, Tharbis, in Egypt. She, of course, was no longer in favor uh, among the Egyptians for what her husband had done. And so most likely she returned to her home country. Forty years passed and Moses was shepherding Jethro's flock in Midian and married his daughter Zipporah, and he begat two sons. All this we know from the biblical record. And finally Moses was called by God to return to Egypt and lead the Israelites out. The news uh, then of the plagues and the miraculous exodus spread quickly throughout all of the region. And it also reached Ethiopia, and it reached Tharbis, who was now uh, certainly in her late 50s, and she learned that Moses um, was alive, and was once again uh, leading an army in a heroic way, and big miracles were happening. So she pursued to find her hero, and she followed that trail, until she finally caught up with them at Hazarot which uh, I show here on the map. Um, And there she introduced herself to to everyone there and she proclaimed herself to be Moses' wife, which she was, of course. And now you can imagine that this caused quite an uproar um, among uh, the, the, the people around Moses. And this we read again in the Bible. But all this background information is not given in the biblical record. But when we having this now, we can understand much better 
um, what uh, happens there uh, and what the Bible describes. So let's read uh, from Numbers 11, verse 35, and then from chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. There it says, And the people journeyed from Kibrot Hattava unto Hazarot, and abode at Hazarot. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses, because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses, had he not also spoken by us? And the Lord heard it. Aaron and Miriam criticized Moses of a sin that he committed long before he was converted. Um, because this happened 40 plus years before, prior to that. Uh, of course, Moses knew of God, but he didn't know God. He only learned or began to get to know God when God called him from the burning bush. And God had clearly forgiven him for what he had done, marrying a woman for political strategic reasons uh, before his calling. But Moses' siblings had uh, a superior um, judgmental attitude and uh, God did not like that at all. And this, this and what we're going to read after this, really shows that Moses, Aaron and Miriam, they were human beings like all of us and they had uh, their same uh, or similar um, uh, characteristics. Uh, they had envy and jealousy and, uh, and all these things. Um, and it comes up, and God uh, sometimes needs to correct that. Miriam and uh, Aaron had forgotten that God had chosen Moses. And that was the reason they were there. And not the other way around. God had spoken not to them first, but to Moses. And that was the only reason they had heard God's voice. Eh? Because they say, had God not also spoken to us? No, actually not. He had spoken to Moses. And because they were with Moses, they had heard God's voice. They were judging Moses' old nature. Moses, the old man, from 40 plus years earlier. Instead of looking at Moses, the new creature. They had witnessed all the plagues in Egypt. Um, Aaron had stood next to Moses before the Pharaoh. They had gone through the Red Sea. And Miriam, then called the prophetess, had taken up the timbrel to praise the Lord after they had um, crossed the Red Sea and the Egyptians were crushed. They had seen the water from the rock. They had seen the manna every day. They had seen Moses return from the mountain and his face had shone like the sun. Only Moses was called up on the mountain. Aaron had already challenged God by allowing the golden calf and he had seen God's anger. And now they were on the doorstep of the promised land. And uh, more than just judging Moses, they were doubting God's forgiveness. And they were criticizing God's choice of Moses. And uh, the trigger of all of this was this woman from Ethiopia, this Tharbis. And the instigator was Miriam. And most likely it was envy. And God was to teach them a lesson. And this is what we read in the following verses, in Numbers 12, verse 3 through 11. And I want to read it so we get uh, full comprehension of what happens. Um, no, it says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out, you three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. 
And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him I speak mouth to mouth, even, apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed, and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow, and Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Uh, so you see, because I said prior to reading this, I said uh, Miriam was the instigator. Miriam is the one who is struck with the leprosy, and uh, Aaron sees the error, and um, also knows what to do. He goes to Moses and calls him my Lord. It's his brother, but in this case he calls him my Lord. And he asks from Moses to mediate um, uh, to, to God to, uh, to take this uh, sickness away. Which will happen eventually, but uh, she has to stay out of the camp for seven days. Now... In the midst of all this, there was of course also Zipporah, Moses' second wife. How did she respond? We don't know. Did she know about Tharbis? Had Moses told her prior to all of this? Or did she find out once the woman caught up with them? We don't know. Was she filled with jealousy? Had she maybe stirred up Miriam? We simply do not know. All of this is possible. In any case, it's a good lesson for us to see and to judge people for who they have become in Christ and not for who they once were or what they once did. This, by the way, is very hard for us. We may say we do, but when something happens, often this old, um, old pain or old memories uh, comes up and we use it once again against the person. So that's a very strong lesson. That's, that's a, a big error if we do so. Secondly, we see in all of this that God is in control of all of history, every single detail of it. Yes, Moses was a great man, but only because God himself had forged Moses into the royal house of Egypt and into the desert of Midian to prepare him for his calling. God likewise is and has been in control of our history and prepares us for our calling. And even today we see kings being raised up and go to battle in foreign countries like Moses did and Hatshepsut his mother did. Why? Why is this happening even today? Because God is setting up the stage for a great exodus and for judgment of those that come against God's servants. If we are willing to give up the riches of this world and the pleasures of sin of this world, as Moses did, and decline to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter, if we are humble and faithful, God will bless us, like he did Moses. Amen.